Please. the others joining. Okay. Now I'll just request all of you to mute yourself audio wise. All right. Uh, so that we can just start off. Uh, welcome all. I count 14 people on screen uh, to the 109th uh, meeting of uh, BBG South. Uh, it's been quite some time. We took a break after we had one much needed physical meeting at the boat club. I think there were easily about 20 or 25 of us. Uh, some of you who attended are here as well. 32. We did to correct you. It was there were 32 people. 32 people. Quite, quite a number. All of yeah. us wanted a good break, so we came. We had a we had a great time, good fellowship, good discussions. Unfortunately, um, the the unanticipated second wave of COVID uh, hit us, and then we were all heading into various or uh, serially running uh, lockdowns from Bangalore, uh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, so on and so forth. So everything went for a toss. Uh, but it's good to see all of us back again online. So welcome. Um, Today's meeting is actually a closed off meeting for members, but we do have one guest. And our guest is a standing guest uh, from the British Deputy High Commission, Paul Dryden, who is with MPA at a mission. I'll invite Paul at the appropriate time to say a few words. Paul, I must commend you. You look a lot more youthful in your t shirt, just like Peter Spagman does. I don't know both of you whether you played it, a t shirt. It looks like the. Uh, no, no, like we are in the meeting. Colors. All right, anyway. It's, a comp it's meant to be a compliment, all right? So uh, welcome again. Now I'd like to invite Christy, the usual format of the session, to say a few words of introduction. Christy, whenever you are ready. Christy, over to you. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, I, I Visited me in my office. Uh, this is uh, Balu of uh, New Eco Pack Solutions. Uh, he's just come to collect the letter. Heyman knows about it uh, for his son's admission in Warwick University. Anyway, uh, good evening to all of you. Thanks for joining, uh, as many as you are. Uh, don't expect too many people. We didn't invite anybody, any outsiders, because this is the chairman's meeting. I will be looking at 10 years of what uh, we've done with BBG from June of 2011. Uh, and I've been literally running it for the last 10 years. Uh, so I'll give you a rundown of the history of all the activities that we did in these 10 years. And then I will plan to look forward into 2022. There's no point of whatever we are doing just now with the COVID situation and with people really trying to keep their businesses running, you know, including myself. Uh, although I've been fortunate that my business has been active all through the COVID period. Uh, so I'll be speaking about that. But in the meantime, I just a few words I have is the plans for the next two months for this month, July and August are, we'll hold Zoom meetings. But in September, subject to the third wave or whatever else happens, uh, we would like to actually run a live meeting as we did in March. Uh, so there is a plan and uh, uh, Mr. Beliapa, who actually offered to host the meeting at the boat club, has again told me that if we are holding such a meeting, he's very happy to block the meeting date in September in the boat club so that we can have a live meeting. Uh, depending again, all of what will happen with COVID, October and December, we'll continue to have live meetings if we can. Uh, I'm not, and a lot of people are not happy with the, with the idea of the Zoom meetings. Uh, many of them feel they want more activity with members as we did in March. And I think uh, we will we'll make a big effort to, uh, uh, to, to, to make that happen. As far as uh, membership is concerned, now all of you will continue to receive the membership uh, notices. We are fortunate that 
a lot of our members continue to pay the reduced rates. The corporate rate is 10,000, the individual rate is 5,000. Uh, I'm trying to set an example of trying to bring forward a few more members into the thing, despite our low activity. And I'm hoping that, uh, that all of you, uh, the active members among you will continue to do likewise. I will talk more in the chairman's review of the history of BBG Chennai, and I will give out my plans at the end of it. We'll have a small 15 minute uh, interactive session. So those of you who feel that there's something worthwhile to contribute can come forward. Vijay Krishna will mentor that section of the meeting. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Christy. Now, before I invite Paul, Paul Dryden, just for the benefit of those who are not familiar as yet, uh, Paul is the deputy head of mission here in Chennai. Uh, he's been in Chennai now for almost two years. Am I right, Paul? Yeah, two years, two years. So, bravo, congrats. You, you have survived two years, particularly in COVID uh, times. Uh, that's, that itself is an achievement. Uh, Paul has been fairly active from the time that he got connected with us as soon as he took office, and I look forward to it being so. Uh, before I invite Paul, I recall we had this discussion with him a couple of months back with, when things were looking a bit brighter. Uh, the UK, Glasgow in particular, is holding the uh, Climate Change Summit, the UN Climate Change Summit, often called uh, COP26. It was meant to be a go-to event. Um, in fact, as part of uh, um, our, one of our delegates that we wanted to pitch was Amalan, I think, who is with Cayman's group right now, um, him being an environmental engineer. So we had a lot of plans, but many of these things uh, were put on hold because of the ongoing pandemic. All right, Paul, all, all, all over to you. Kindly unmute yourself, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much, uh, VJ, and uh, thank you for your very kind words of me being looking younger. Uh, I've actually uh, been busy during the last few months uh, because I've lost 18 kgs of weight, um, which I'm quite uh, pleased about. And uh, so uh, that's probably not, that's why I'm probably looking a wee bit uh, younger rather than the t-shirt. <laughs> but uh, but uh, um, thank you very much indeed. And thank you very much for your kind words. Um, the next week is actually my two years of being in uh, Chennai. Um, if anybody had said at the beginning of my posting that we would be what we're doing today uh, and have been doing it for the last 15 months, I think anybody would have just laughed and wouldn't have, wouldn't have understood what, what, what we have actually gone through. Um, it's been really, really trying. Uh, it's certainly not over yet. And uh, um, I am glad you mentioned the, the third wave. Um, I was on to the one of my colleagues in uh, um, Chattisgarh uh, today, and uh, in Chattisgarh, the uh, the R rate has risen for three days in a row. Um, so uh, there is a definite feeling that the third wave that many people are talking about is on its way. And of course, Chattisgarh was a few weeks ahead of Chennai in the second wave. So let's hope that doesn't uh, uh, materialize into anything, and, but let's, let's just wait and see. Um, I was going to say that um, if the numbers are as they are today, um, I was very pleased to see that there was no deaths in Chennai on Sunday, um, which I believe was the first or second time only since February 2020 since there have been no deaths recorded. And I think this week it's been in single figures. Although that's dreadful for those who have been affected by this, I think in the big scale of things, that's quite encouraging. And I was going to mention, um, you, if you want next month, uh, why don't you come to the High Commission and we could have our meeting outside in the garden. Um, if, you, if you want that, I can, I can arrange that. So maybe something that you want to discuss uh, later on, but I'm, we're happy to do that pending the COVID numbers, but let's just wait and see. Okay, so what's been happening uh, since March 
Well, I've been away on leave uh, in the UK, which is a very, very strange leave. Um, as soon as I arrived in the UK, I had to do uh, the hotel quarantine that everybody is doing. I was the second flight out after the red route, uh, the red listing. Um, I, of course, I, we cannot fly out of Chennai at the moment and haven't been doing so since I believe, I think it was Boxing Day or certainly around about that time. And uh, I originally flew out of Hyderabad uh, into the UK when immediately went into uh, um, uh, Novotel uh, Hotel in uh, Heathrow or called it as we called it with our inmates where it was a rather odd uh, experience um, where we were meant to uh, quarantine for 10 days but in fact it's 11 days because the first day is day zero and uh, uh, you're surrounded by guards, uh, I say guards, it's basically overweight men, um, usually Indians and Pakistanis or Bangladeshis uh, in high-vis uh, um, uh, vests and they are everywhere. Uh, but I managed to do that and I managed to get out and it was quite, uh, quite interesting to see in the UK uh, the freedoms that you have. Uh, I was wandering about without a mask on uh, in, in, this, in the town, but of course it's masks uh, in shops and stuff like that. Um, it's rather odd that you can go to a football match at the moment, but you can't sing in church. I don't know how that, I don't know how that works, but uh, that's what's happening at the moment. Of course, that's changing this week or next Monday on the 19th, uh, where the last of the restrictions uh, or will be lifted in England. And that is going to be very, very interesting with the backdrop of the, uh, what's it called, the, um, a, the, the, the third wave, um, or, and certainly the Delta variant that has been dominating here in India is dominating in the UK. It's about 97% of all new cases. And yesterday there was 42,000 new cases, and that was the highest rate, uh, I believe, since about January uh, and rising. Um, but because we have roughly 86% of people uh, vaccinated uh, or adults vaccinated uh, for the first uh, dose and about 63% of the second dose, fortunately, the, uh, the numbers uh, are not particularly high uh, of hospitalizations, although they are rising, uh, and certainly deaths are much, much lower, much, much lower than the peak than they were in January. In January, the worst day was just shy of 2,000 uh, uh, deaths. Uh, yesterday, I believe it was under 50. So uh, um, there is definitely a correlation between getting vaccinated and breaking the cycle of, 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 of serious illness and possible death. So that is good news. But what we are also seeing in the UK, and uh, I know that Peter is in Ireland, but I'm sure it's similar, is that the, um, the elderly are, have been, uh, I say elderly, I've been one of them that have been vaccinated from, from the 90s or hundreds down to the 50s. They were the first people to get their uh, vaccination. And we're seeing very, very few, very few uh, people who are getting seriously ill, although there are a few, uh, but uh, compared to what it was before, uh, we're not seeing so many people being hospitalised. It's the people that are not being vaccinated, and they are between like the 20s and the 30s that are seeing people getting catching COVID in the majority. So that's what's happening in the UK. Um, we we have now quite I'm quite pleased about this. We are the first. A, um, office in the India network that has an electric vehicle car as their flag car. Uh, we took uh, the JLR I-PACE and we've, that's now been on the road for about 10 days now and I have to say it's a fantastic car and it's a real head turner. Um, for those who want to know the figures, it's 0 to 100 kilometres an hour in 4.8 seconds. Um, it does roughly, with an AC on, it does roughly 300 and, uh, sorry, 285 miles in a, a what's it called, in a uh, um, urban setting. And uh, at the moment, uh, we have only well, um, uh, charging on long form. Uh, um, and that is 
been provided by a British company called City EV. Uh, it took about half an hour to install the charger, and the charger takes uh, about um, seven hours to charge on a slow charge. Uh, the 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 what's it called? The technology um, should be here by Christmas, and we should have a fast charge, and that should be within 20 minutes of charging. So that's excellent news. And what we are also doing is we're procuring um, um, uh, solar panels from a British company, and they will be installing them very, very shortly in the office, which means that the uh, charging of the car will be completely off grid, which is exactly what we want. Uh, we're also planning to purchase a Tata Nexon uh, very, very shortly uh, in the next month or two. And we're also uh, purchasing an electric vehicle two-wheeler. And that will mean our uh, whole of our a, uh, a fleet will be EV uh, and that we uh, um, wish an aspiration of that by uh, uh, the middle of next year at the very latest, at the very latest. Um, so that's what we are planning, possibly by 31 December actually. Um, so that's what we're, we're planning. Uh, the news that I have is that there's again an aspiration for British Airways to return to Chennai um, at the beginning of next month, uh, which is good. Which is good news. Which is good news. However, um, that is all pending state government and the uh, national government. But what is what I've heard um, from British Airways? is that the state government are very, very keen for BA to resume their uh, um, flights from Chennai as soon as possible. Um, so I think that's very, very encouraging. And the state government are actually batting for BA as well as the, Brit as the British government, as uh, we are, the British government um, in Chennai. So I think that's very, very encouraging. That's not happened before um, during the previous government. Uh, so uh, that's the state government, I should say. But of course, the decision, the final decision is made by the national government. So I think it's basically a wait and see. But I have to say we are being quite encouraged and we should know in the next few days if that's going to happen. Um, so I will keep you posted on that. And I think you will all agree that would be a fantastic addition um, um, to uh, Chennai rather than going through Hyderabad or when I did go back to the UK, I had to come back via Bangalore because the Hyderabad was the, uh, uh, out of action. They have now returned, but the, uh, uh, I had to come through Bangalore. So that's it from me. Um, Oliver is out of station at the moment. He's on well-earned leave, and he should be returning on the 21st of August. So I'm currently in charge. Um, so I promise not to declare war. Um, but say uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and do that. So thanks very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Just, just, to, just to sum up, Paul, you said quite a few things. So thanks for giving us an update on uh, the pandemic in the UK. Yes, third wave um, is not something that we can just wish away. Uh, there have been enough predictions from health experts, uh, not only in UK, but the rest of the world, including India. Yeah, so we are on the watch for that. Uh, let's hope we are better prepared this time around for it. Uh, thank you for your update also on the uh, EV. I just wanted to say tongue in cheek, the specifications that Jaguar has sounds wonderful. If we had the equivalent of an autobahn, we could drive it to maximum satisfaction. So I hope very soon we have uh, roads here also to match the capability of, of EVs. EVs, I understand, have got excellent torque. Uh, torque is the term, right, Peter? For for uh, speed and movement. So uh, uh, let's hope we have a good right. and good marriage of both uh, speed as well as utility. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Paul, for your offer of the use of uh, the grounds, uh, vast grounds in Cottingley. I'm very sure Christy and the committee will be quite happy to consider your proposals for a fellowship or meeting or something equivalent. I think for most of us, it's been ages we must have almost forgotten the likes of Anderson Road and, and the BDHC. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best. Stay safe. Thank you. Right. Uh, fellow members, 
Um, the, uh, the next major item of the agenda is to invite Christy back. Uh, Christy will do a review of the last 10 years of uh, BBG's existence on South. Uh, it's been a very exciting 10 years. Um, he and a few others have been there right from the start. So he's, he has a lot of things to share. Uh, naturally, with along with the highs, you also have some flatliner situations. So those are things to consider as well. Um, I hand you over to Christy, who will take us through uh, BBG from in its new avatar from inception in 2011 till what we plan to do beyond 2021. Christy, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vijay. Uh, thank you very much, Paul, for the sort of rundown and activities at the at the High Commission. And uh, more importantly, thank you for the offer to use the ground. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Chrissy. It's just somebody has not muted themselves yet. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much for the offer to use the garden and the lawn at uh, the High Commission for maybe a meeting in next month. I'll uh, speak to you, write to you about it. Of course, we will want to take it up and uh, to have a live meeting uh, in the High Commission would be fantastic. So that's uh, uh, that's uh, our, 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 our view on that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know how many of you, maybe Mr. Beliapa, maybe a few of you have been there from 2010, 11. I know Peter was there right from the beginning and offered to immediately provide support and he has done so right from the outset. 2010 or 2009, when uh, Mike Netavrianakis uh, took over as the Deputy High Commissioner, I think in his takeover review, he found that there had been a BBG in action in Chennai. But like what happens with these sort of entities, some strong member, in this case it was, I'm sorry to say, the amalgamations group, took custody of the BBG at that time. And... Uh, literally controlled it. The result, of course, is most of the other medium, small companies felt they didn't really have much interaction with the amalgamation group. And so the BBG slowly crumbled and it just died a natural death. There was no BBG from the 1990s or 1993 or 95 onwards. And it was when Mike had seen this in his takeover period. In 2010, he called groups of us uh, to the High Commission. Uh, we used to have a lot of, quite a lot of receptions like that during Mike Nip, every Nakis' period. Uh, he was really trying to get interest out of the British members, out of people involved with uh, India, British business, and see if he could revive a, a new BBG in uh, Chennai. This happened through 2000, the second half of 2010, through about three or four meetings. And in the end, he got hold of three of us. Uh, there was a chap from uh, Burma Shell. There was Mike Freeman, who was running the airport project management with AAI, Airport Authority. And there was me. Three of us, we worked together for a few months. Uh, I spoke to, I was introduced and spoke to the BBG in Delhi and the BBG in uh, Bombay, the chairman of these BBGs, who gave, uh, he, he were very forthcoming and gave a lot of very good advice and gave me the brief on how to get this BBG started. And uh, we then tried to put together a list of uh, maybe about 30 or 40 
British and uh, UK related companies and worked on that list between the three of us. And we finally came up with a solution that we should get this BBG started. I was fortunate that uh, we had uh, Vijay Raghavan, my legal advisor, uh, to, to tell us how we could do this. He felt that since we were doing all this on a voluntary basis, uh, we should not get into any personal liability, which is why unlike Bombay or unlike Delhi, he felt that we should just be a charitable trust, not registered. And that is the way we've kept the BBG's constitution. We are a charitable trust and the trustees are, I'm the founding truster, trustee and we've got uh, Peter Spackman, Ravi Kumar, and we had, I forget his name, but we had the chap in Burma Shell, but he's moved away. Uh, so the, the management of the trust and uh, the management of the BBG really rests with the trustees. It's not as many people, including the, the people in the High Commission, thinking that it's the members who run the BBG. No. Hello, can, can I go ahead, please? Yes, yes, please. Are you guys all right? Uh, Mr. Belliapa, can you kindly mute your audio, please? So, so this is how we set ourselves up in June of 2011. This is nearly 10 years ago. It is 10 years ago. Uh, and we got the BBG started with uh, 30 or 31 new members, which was a very good number compared to how people started. We added on a lot of numbers. We did rise our, raise our membership within two or three years. Can one of you mute your mute your uh, mic or please or your phone? Uh, so we started with about thirty-one members and we went up in two or three years to one hundred and twenty members. So this is the beginning of BBG. Uh, unfortunately, with the way things have gone, even in COVID times and all that, the membership number has come down to just under a hundred. Uh, I'd like to, I, I've mentioned this before and for new members who've joined, I'd like each of you to look at your contacts among the people involved with Indo-British business to try to introduce them as new members of BBG. We are always looking out for new members continuously. Uh, so that's how we started in 2011. We did have another gentleman, a, a youngish dynamic guy. Unfortunately, he was running a shoe business and you probably see his pavers, the shoe shops all over the airports. Uh, he didn't have really the time to attend to things like BBG. I was co-chair and in the end of the day, we shook hands and we decided that I would take it over with a view of finding somebody else younger and more dynamic to deal with it. So I took it on in 2012. Unfortunately, uh, oh, I don't know whether fortunately, but I, it's been slung around my neck. And even though I've been trying at different times that we should get somebody else to take it on, oh. I have, I have, I have had to continue as the as the chairman. Happy to do it as long as I'm still here in business. I'm not as young as most of you, except for Mr. Beliap, I'm, I just hit 74. Uh, and I'm still running an active business with nearly 350 people working. And touch wood, my business, despite COVID and everything, is still growing and pretty active and keeps me very busy every day. Uh, how have I managed and uh, BBGs we've set up in Bangalore and Calcutta do not manage? I don't know, but uh, the thing is, of course, 
that being retired, not really. I work from about eight o'clock in the morning and I don't finish till nine at night. I'm on my own. Uh, in the meantime, some of you know, I did get married 1st of June, 2019 to a lady with whom I've been for uh, nearly 20 years. Uh, but uh, she's not here, she's in London. So I have almost the entire day. I go home, I don't have internet at home. I don't have anything except a television. So there's nothing to disturb me. I go to sleep very early and I get up very early. So I have a full, full 12 hours, if not more, every day to do what I do, run my business and do the BBG. And I have my own office. As some of you who come here, it's a very simple office. Uh, and I have uh, my staff are the secretariat for the BBG. So that's how it's run. 2012. We were lucky because Mike took a very active role. Mike Nitabrinakis took a very active role. We were always invited to all the activities in the High Commission. We had lots and lots of events. And of course, what happened is in early 2012, uh, the High Commissioner, Sir Dickie Stagg, retired or left. And the new High Commissioner, during one of his visits, came to Chennai. And when he arrived here, Mike and I were able to tell him that though we were a new BBG, we had attended the annual conference, the first one of its kind in Goa. And we offered as a brand new BBG with hardly nine months in existence, we offered that we would do the second annual conference in Chennai. We were lucky in many ways that we got uh, uh, James Bevan's interest because this was a big Indo or British India event. And he probably thought it was a fantastic idea as well. We were lucky that he took a huge interest in this and said that yes, he would be the chief guest. He would come and get the conference opened. We fixed dates on 28th and 29th of September, well in advance. This was still March of 2012. So we felt we had a good little over six months to work through all this. Of course, uh, it never happens like we think. And those of you who haven't seen it, I'm trying to get the soft version because if you can hear me, I'm going to try and get the yes. soft version of that brochure. And I want to see if you can load that up. We'll get it through. Dave Nair has got the original, I think. We load it on the website. And so all of you can see what sort of an event we had. Massive. I myself had not anticipated something like this. And of course it meant BBG itself, we were not going to raise all the money. We had everybody from Rolls-Royce, people in Delhi, people in Bombay. I mean, of course, the High Commissioner themselves, seeing that uh, GM Bevan was so keen on this, they joined in. And the high, the, each of the BBGs joined in. So we had huge, massive support from everybody. And I was able to work this through into a, an event far beyond what we thought it would be held it at the Hyatt uh, Regency. It was over two days, 28th. The guests from all over the place arrived. We had a big, massive reception of the High Commission, which was uh, thankfully funded by Jaguar Land Rover. Uh, what's the name of the company? The, the agents here. Uh, Sanjeev uh, Subramaniam, most grateful to him. A VST, VST Jaguar, Land Rover, they were fantastic. They funded the entire reception at the High Commission. I was with Mark Runacres in Delhi and 
also our friends in Bombay, we raised all, altogether almost about 30 lakhs. Uh, being the second one, we felt, our committee felt we should, and people had to travel to Chennai, we felt that we would sort of make it a ticketless event. We had about 250 guests altogether. Uh, I can say it now, although it has been kept a secret for a long time, the sort of support we got from Mike, and I think uh, uh, Paul is going to find this quite surprising, because we had the High Commissioner involved, the whole event at the, at the hotel was billed to PDHC, so that we didn't have to pay taxes on it. We funded it out of the out of the charity, out of the donations we got, out of the sponsorships we got, but we didn't pay any tax on it. I was not supposed to say it uh, for many years because it was a secret. I mean, thanks to James Bevan and thanks to Mike, uh, we we got it all done tax free, and it was. Uh, I, I think it's still probably, if you ask a lot of people, it was probably one of the best BBG conferences ever held. We put a culture thing into it by having a dance and music in the reception of the High Commission. We had Vijay Raghavan, a constant supporter, uh, brought in. He knew this group from Bangalore, and they put on a fantastic show. Uh, so when you see the uh, the 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 sort of digital version uh, Vikas is going to put onto our website. You will see what an event it was. So after that, of course, it doesn't end with that. We produced, an, and that's why I want you to see this digital version on the website. Uh, we got a report done. Uh, I don't think conferences held in Bombay or in Delhi ever produced a report like that. Lots of pictures, lots of uh, description of whatever happened. So I'm, I'm really proud. I couldn't have done it myself, but Mark Ranekers uh, and all the people in Delhi, all the high commissioners, all the BBGs participated in it hugely. I don't think we'll ever be able to do something like this again. Uh, but see, see it and then you'll know what it was. Uh, it took us some months to come back to normal, but we held meetings every month in October, November, December, at guest speakers. Uh, this is one of the things the Bombay BBG chairman at that time told me, that do not stop. Every month, make sure a meeting is held, you have guest speakers. Added to that, Mike Freeman, my other colleague on the committee told me, let us present, get members to present their business. And that's one of the other things we do, which is different from uh, all the BBGs. We get a member, you meet people, but you don't know what they really do. So as you've seen on many occasions, if you've attended our meeting, and we're going to get, uh, Lata, you are going to present uh, Tanker Foundation at one of our meetings. And in that process, maybe you will get some sponsorships for Tanker Foundation. Uh, so every month, irrespective, meetings have been held. I wanted to do one major thing, major event for the 100th meeting, but then COVID stepped in and we couldn't do it. Uh, but uh, 109th meeting this one is and I want you to know that it's not many 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 organizations that manage to do that persistently every month whether it's 25 people 35 or 40 the largest number was when Mike Nithavrinak has left we had 88 guests at that meeting remember that all our members run their own companies such as myself it's not like we have the luxury of time to do these things. You must persist constantly 
and have it have it active all the time. Uh, this is what uh, Mark Runacres told me when he said, if you're beginning to do it, do it and do it continuously. And I have to tell you, it's not easy, but we work at it every week. We make contacts with new members. We make contacts with members who are not happy or want to leave and we try to persuade them to stay. So that is how we still have, I think close to about 98, just under hundred members. And these are all people other than the honorary members, these are all people who pay their subscriptions. Jayashree in my office sends out uh, notices and invoices to me, all of them. And uh, thankfully, and I'm grateful that all of you who pay the fees and want to be members still feel it's worth it. Personally, of course, I do it because I feel it's worth it. And I feel I like to help medium and small industry. The big boys, as I tell even people in the High Commission, and I tell UK IBC as well. The big boys don't need us. The Standard Chartered Banks and Rolls Royces and all these big boys, they've got enough depth and strength in their own companies. It's the medium and small guys who need our help, mentoring them, introducing them, helping them in their business. And this is what we do. I have to tell you that I do it every single day both with my contacts, and that is the reason why I'm still here and why I feel I can contribute and do something. These are the small, medium people who don't have the contacts, who need the mentoring and who need the help. And I do it uh, just like that. So it's not something which I feel, you know, something I'm obliged, nobody's paying me a salary or consultancy fees or anything like that for me to do it. So that is what we revived after 2012 in 13, 14, we thought what we should do. The conference of course gave an impetus to Bangalore, the high commissioner there uh, to want to have a BBG there. And we tried to start one, we did start one. I went there many times, uh, somehow, I don't know what it is about whether it's the IT people or the high tech people in Bangalore or the way Bangalore is structured. It sort of, they met, but they didn't meet. They didn't get that core group together and having just one or two people trying to keep a BBG running doesn't work. It hasn't worked, it never worked. It's just now through our own efforts in Bangalore, through Arun Martin, who is in Bangalore and through other people, we have about seven members in Bangalore. And it'd be fantastic if uh, Kamesh, our fame advertising managers to get this new young lady, Lavania, uh, who persuaded her grandfather to invest some money and open shop in London and to open shop in Dubai that uh, we want, would like her to become a member or if not Nalis. And also we want to have her as a speaker. If she visits here in Chennai and we can try to get her to join either next month or when we have a live meeting in September, we'll do it. So we have now a small group in Bangalore. We had a few members in Trivandrum, but with Vijay Kumar, sort of moving away and going to the Middle East, uh, that has fallen away. Uh, the other place we thought we would get a BBG going is from my own relationships is the city of Kolkata, Calcutta as I know it. Calcutta has a lot of British companies, tea exporters, uh, engineering companies, all originally British, which have now become uh, Indian. Uh, so we got uh, Shaurya Mandal of, uh, of Fox and Mandal to, to take up the chairmanship, to start a meeting along with the High Commission. We did it, I have a feeling, in August of 2014. We did a, Vikas, you were kind enough to, Vikas, or was it uh, 
Peter Spackman, you did a very nice uh, logo for them and created a couple of uh, standees, which we used at the meeting. And I think we got started reasonably well with at least about 30, 28 or 30 members, 2014. Somehow again, uh, Shaurya has found it very difficult to keep the BBG active in Kolkata. I have gone there thanks to my life membership of the Tolligans Club in Calcutta. I've gone there many, many times and joined events with the High Commission and meetings with Shaurya and his colleagues. Uh, I cannot say we've been altogether successful. Shaurya still makes a big effort and we're trying to actually get that revived as soon as this COVID-19 is over. I'll move a little bit fast now because each year we kept holding monthly meetings. Each year we did something different. In 2000, I think it was 14 and 15, BBG Chennai held meetings along with some others in the UK parliament. Hugely attended, I think we had almost 180 or close to 200 people attending because it was the UK Parliament. Wonderful events. We met a lot of people, probably made a few members. That, that happened in those two years in a row. 2016-17, the, the, the business community or the Chamber of Commerce and the city of Liverpool decided they wanted to hold a Liverpool Business Festival. They invited a lot of people. We got invited. Uh, it was June of 2016. And then they were planning one. We took about 20 or 22 of us from BBG Chennai, uh, spent two days in Liverpool. Uh, and they planned to hold another one in June of 2018. We attended that as well, but with not that many members. And it wasn't that much of a success as the first one. Uh, one of the things that we have done every year, and the support has come from a company we helped exporting papadums to UK. I think it's about close to three and a half or four million pounds worth of papadums to UK, JDS. Uh, we helped them organize their website. We helped them to present the company and we got them to participate in a small and medium uh, competition. There were people from Delhi, Bombay, Pune, Calcutta, Goa, all participating. And guess what? JDS won the prize. It was a huge event, a huge push up for JDS. And because of the help we gave them, JDS has been the main sponsor for each of our Christmas parties in December every year. So I'm grateful to JDS for that. Uh, the other things we've been doing other than our meetings are that Bangalore, Bangalore, we've been visiting regularly, staying at Bangalore Club, hosting events at Bangalore. We've done meetings in Pune, small team of us went when Pune actually was going through a period where they almost died. And it's somehow the other uh, Ram Gopal Rao and kept, uh, there was a chap called Brigadier Apte. They managed to keep it going. The flag is still flying although with much lower numbers, maybe 20, 25 members. Pune, uh, sorry, Goa is another place we visited a couple of times. And uh, somehow the other, the lady who ran it, I forget her name now, she had cancer and she died. And with that, Goa has been very quiet. Uh, I mentioned earlier, but all of you are not present, that being a charity from the right from the beginning, this is again different from all the other BBGs. Being a charity, we felt as a committee that we should support some charities. 
And we're very proud that one of the people we met here, English guy from Manchester, but went to family emigrated to Tasmania in Australia. He came here as a, possibly as a hippie, and he met the mother, the French, the Egyptian French lady who was a mother at Oroville. Asked him what he wants to do. He said he likes gardening. Took him to a 60 acre dry barren site. And she asked him to grow a forest on that 60 acre or 65 acre site. The name of this guy is Joss Brooks. Some of you have met him. Some of you have heard him. Uh, so Joss Brooks is uh, annually our recipient of a, quite a large amount for us, but not terribly big for him. He raises a lot of money doing things, including the Adyar Ponga. If many of you haven't been, you should go there and see it. It was a rubbish dump of the Chennai Corporation. He cleaned up a 65-acre site on the north bank of the Adea River. And it's today a beautiful, beautiful water body with trees and all sorts of uh, life, natural life back in it, fish in the lake. Uh, and some of you should make an effort and try and visit this place. And if you can, I urge you to also visit Oroville. Pichandikulam Forest is the name of this place. We can organize it if a small group wants to go and we can make a van of few of us can go down. Worthwhile a visit to see what Go Josh Brooks does. He creates water bodies, which I think many governments in India should all know. You don't dig a hole and just expect water to stand there. You have to really bed the, the base of the a lake or the water body. I need to grow trees around it. Uh, and it's amazing how over the years, he's been here 43 years, he's created lots of water bodies and lots of trees. So we're very happy to support him. We also support the X Services Association. Many of you don't have a clue of what this is, but there are a lot of uh, families who were there in the Second World War uh, and at independence, they are still supported in a small way from UK, but we support the charity for the dependence of the X Services Association. At Christmas time, we hold a party, we provide them with funds, and we give them some gifts once a year. Uh, we also funded Dr. K. M. Cherian, who does children's uh, heart surgery and I'm trying to remember and then there's a UK charity called Age. What age is it? Help Age. Help Age is another charity. It's based in Delhi but it's a UK charity supporting. I mean in India we don't have social security and there are lots of and there are lots of uh, older people nobody to look after them. So HelpAge does this and the BBG is supporting HelpAge. Uh, one of the other charities we support is Mr. Belly Upper's father's fund where he supports education, sending uh, a, 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 a interesting person across the UK, but also in trying to train teachers of teachers trained by the British Council. So they, these are a few, I mean, there are a few more that we do, but uh, I'm telling you the main ones. So those are charities we support. The other thing, of course, I've told you already is we support all our members. I sometimes look at the list and actually I find maybe out of the hundred odd members, 50 to 60 of them have been mentored by us, have been introductions have been given, and they benefited. I mean, I hope you, I hope a couple of you don't mind when I name them. One of them is Loomis, which is a recruiting firm. And I think they did a lot of work with our members. The other one is Howden Brokers, the insurance company. 
who's, uh, I mean, they, when I started working with them, they had three or four staff. And today I think they have about, I don't know whether it's 30 or 40 staff. And Howden is brokers are doing extremely well. I'm giving you just a couple of examples, but uh, JDS, the Papadam exporter, uh, there's uh, also lots of smaller companies we help from time to time. Uh, so that is a rundown of what we've done. Uh, I want to spend maybe another few minutes now. I've already spoken on some plans for, don't look at 20 and 21. Uh, we did what we could. We kept our membership alive. Uh, we held a few meetings on Zoom. Not the best way to do it. Uh, but we kept doing it. But what I am now looking at is we have to look beyond 21. So I'm looking at 2022. Uh, I'd like to keep having these monthly meetings. Uh, my committee still feels we should continue it. I'd like to look at the format and see if we change the format, but otherwise we'll continue to hold meetings. The next meeting is 110th meeting and uh, Love to have it at the High Commission if we can, in the garden or on the lawn. Uh, the second thing that we focus on, and I do it along with the, all the other things we do, is I keep telling everybody about the membership. And Vijay Krishna just told me that even if 25% of the members, about 25 members, each of them just made an effort in the next two, three months, just to bring one member each. That'll be 25 members. It's not, it's not so difficult. And Ravi Kumar, who came up with this idea that we could even have associate members, those who are outsiders, but who have things to do with British companies. For instance, my company, Red Sky, property company, we have people working with us. Now I'm looking at any of my contacts who could become members and we'll try to actually get them. Same way, do look at your own uh, members, Murray and company, any of the others who can do it, very happy to have them join us. I have on my list here, a mention of the relationship with BDHC. We are nowhere like what our relationship was with BDHC when we started. Uh, BDHC itself has it's got its own limitations and whatever it's doing. And it depends a lot on what the government wants to do with it. Uh, but we would like, as uh, Paul was kind enough to ask us to come to BDHC, very happy to do it. We used to do it all the time. So, August, if we can, we'll try to hold a meeting there. We'd like to improve, increase our relationship with the High Commission and to keep it a little bit, if not like it was in the years gone, uh, at least a little bit more active. Um, subject to what happens with COVID-19, whether we have, as uh, Paul was mentioning, if the third wave hits us, I'm hoping that uh, Chennai and, Teling, uh, and uh, Tamil Nadu uh, will be, with, with the restraints that we have, uh, will be a little, bit, a little bit less affected by the COVID third wave. But subject to that, what I'm planning, but this will happen only in February, March, April next year, is a visit to, could be Thailand, because I want our some of our committee to see how active the uh, British
Hello, am I back on? Yes, we, we lost you. So, sorry, no, I lost, uh, I lost signal in my office. That's what yeah. happened. I'll finish fairly quickly now because... You are you talking about Thailand. <laughs> Thailand, because I want the committee and the other members, those who want to come, to join me and see how active an Indo-British uh, chamber can be. Uh, the other two places uh, I have in mind are Dubai as well as Colombo. Uh, between Captain Ramaswamy, me and some of the others, we have enough contacts in Colombo and Sri Lanka and we'd like to see what we can do there. Dubai, of course, uh, I have a lot of contacts and so do all of you. So these are three places where next year, we as the BBG who's always taken delegations out to these places, we will go there. Uh, what I want all of you to focus on is our own medium, small industries. Uh, the, the ones here going to UK and the ones from UK coming to South India want to mentor them, assist them, give introductions. Uh, last of all, if and when I go to, to London and that will be in Christmas this year, uh, or October, I will go, but I'm not sure we can hold the meeting in October. Uh, but I will hold the meeting. Peter, if you can make a note of this, and I'd like you to, if possible, join the meeting uh, Peter, in yeah, London. Uh, in London, Peter left the meeting. Okay, uh, I'll get Ravi Kumar, I'll get Equinity, I'll get some of the other, quite a lot. We have almost about 25 to 30 contacts in London who are either members here in India or they have joined us in London. Uh, so that's the other thing. And finally, of course, Ram Gopal Rao, I don't know if he's, if he's on this meeting. Thank you for the discussion we had the other day. He's invited us to come to Pune. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. All right, so it's, uh, we have uh, 12 members. 15, so, have 15 so minutes, is, interactive. Yeah. No, we, it's open to the floor. Uh, I would invite any one of you to, to, to add your own uh, ideas, thoughts, impressions, or what you would like to see going forward 2022. Please come online. And you're, add you're, add always, you're always also welcome, please, if I can add. You're also welcome to write to me and to Vijay Krishna or any of the other committee, Balaji, Hemant, any of them. Please write to us what you would like to see from on BBG. Uh, Mr. Vijay, if I can take this opportunity. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I, I think always uh, it's very, very uh, uh, nostalgic because I've been in BBG from 2012, I guess, uh, Mr., uh, to be with uh, Christy for all along as leadership and uh, chairing the BBG. I always like BBG uh, compared to the rest of the forums, uh, which I'm in, in FIKI and also uh, BNI and all this because it's very informal, but it also gives you a lot of depth of French uh, friendship across uh, BBG. The people whom I've uh, become friends with, uh, like um, Christy, Vijay, uh, I can say in first name, which is the con convenience we have instead of the sir and mister, which we do normally within Chennai or within all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, circles. So I think Balaji is a great friend, uh, Venkat, and uh, we do. I, and I also should say that I've got a quite a uh, uh, not a large amount, but a good, uh, reasonable business, small amounts of cartridge business from the BBG group. Uh, Venkat's company, uh, Market Simplified, continuously buys from us through Balaji, a couple of other companies. So it's a great association. And uh, I think Nostal, uh, from last 10 years, what, uh, what uh, we could uh, really highlight was uh, the Liverpool exercise where we even saw the Queen, uh, the Viral, uh, Mayor of Viral, and then uh, people in Liverpool inviting us to invest in business almost took up a desk there for business and then it really did not uh, really did not sound well but we got a lot of good leads I think Mr. Vijay was there, Balaji, a lot of others were there uh, so it's a very very good uh, forum uh, thankfully so I think uh, uh, I, I'm glad to help uh, Christy and uh, Vijay to uh, you know increase the membership and we have a lot of connections now I think we definitely will be uh, supportive of that and uh, a great, great, uh, great to be there. Of course, we enjoyed the sessions at Anderson Road and looking forward to that, Mr. I recently went on the platform to promote additive manufacturing. In fact, I was talking to uh, 
Peter, who just connected with me yesterday as a coincidence, and uh, I'm going to help him some uh, prototyping and stuff like that. So we have a good combination of people around. A Westminster from uh, Dr. Manpreet was a great, a great uh, uh, initiative as well. Uh, I happened to be there at the opening along with Mr. Cherian and others. Uh, so it is, it's indeed always a pleasure to be at BBG. I look forward to the BB, BBG meetings, uh, mostly in person, I guess. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Cherian. And also, he sent me off to CMC Velour. Of course, we did not come through, but then I, I got some good connections in CMC Velour for document uh, digitization and so on and so forth. Uh, so yes, it's a very informal gathering, but it's very, very good. And sometimes we had some formal presentations also. Uh, Liverpool was great uh, with Kennedy's, with us, and with, uh, uh, with Ravi and all of us presenting there. I think it was great, great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Vijay. And Fantastic. Thank you, well done. Thank you, Sridhar. Thank you, Sridhar. Thank you. All right. Anybody else there? Sridhar, Melanie, King Shuk. Sridhar should have a lot to share. He's gone. He's left. Huh? I see Heyman's uh, screen still on. If somebody from Heyman's group. Balaji. Vijay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes? yeah Good evening. I just want to check. The moment you mentioned the word Thailand, we are all excited. By the still are driving the car, you can let us know when is the tentative month which we can go there. Absolutely, we can, we'll, we can do that. Yeah, we can. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. I'm glad to see your enthusiasm and your interest to go to Thailand. It's it's still <laughs> worth it. It is worth it for many reasons. Uh, Bangkok as a city has got lots to show off. Uh, I mean. The airport itself, if you think of it, and I think of our Sorry. airport at Minambakam, what an entry the airport has in, in Bangkok. And I think anybody who comes there is so impressed by the way the Thais have actually uh, invited or been open to tourists and visitors and businessmen. It's just a small correction. My enthusiasm yeah. is not mine alone. It's one into four. We have four of us. Thank you. I want all of you to join us. We'll we'll make a great uh, we'll make a great event out of that, and I'll get the help of the uh, the Thai the uh, the British uh, Thailand Chamber of Commerce. Uh, uh, it's it's a fantastic organization they run there, and uh, I'd like you like to see how they do it, and we'll attend one of their meetings. All right, thank you, Balaji. Anybody else? King Shok, Rida, Melanie. Hi. Uh, no, no, nothing much to add apart from the fact uh, it's it's really good to connect with all of you after all this while. Um, and I do hope that we'll soon have the opportunity to have a face-to-face -face conversation and and have some some good time. Or that that's uh, at. Uh, Jim and Tonic or somewhere else, uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, really great to connect with all of you. Thank you. Good. Thanks a lot, King Shuk. Thank, Thank you. you. Melanie, are you there? She's probably left. Right. Sridhar, Grant Thornton. Yes, Melanie, I see you on screen. Yeah, would you like to add, add to something, say something? Uh, not much, but would like to uh, thank all of you for inviting me to the meeting and uh, glad that, you know, um, we're here right now. You did very well, uh, Melanie, at that meeting on the 18th of March. Oh, thank you. You, you made the circle of all the 30 people and met literally, literally not everybody. Really, not really, Christy, not really. Uh, I, I couldn't meet up with half of them. <laughs> no, no, no. I think you did very well. And uh, thanks for participating in this and uh, and being with us here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Srida, you've always been a... Yep. <laughs> I think uh, support it's, it's been fantastic to be involved with BBG, you know, uh, last so many years. Uh, if I remember right, I think I was uh, introduced to this, to the firm, and Christy was... Obviously, the first person I met in BBG, and uh, as always, no, very welcoming and uh, friendly, and and uh, he's been a great leader in BBG. Uh, uh, nothing more to add, no, from what he said, but 
uh, certainly you know a very simple down to earth person who's been holding the reins out here uh, holding us tight uh, it's been a great fellowship within the bbg as well no a uh, lot of friends we could make uh, i think that's more important no from a networking perspective i've always found this to be a, a great forum to be in and uh, thanks again for bbg for a few opportunities which we've had as a firm no i represent a firm a uh, grand thornton uh, being a senior partner here uh, uh, christy and the committee you know uh, has been pretty pretty uh, encouraging and involving us in a lot of conversations out here you know on on matters of expertise which we bring on to the table as a firm and uh, i think uh, that has been a lovely experience we've been through basically and uh, of course Thank you. You know, it, it gave us all sorts of uh, uh you know uh, uh opportunities uh, uh and and avenues to meet with very different set of sets of people and help us in our network so thanks thanks once again to all of you yeah. thank you thank Shreda. you say that thank you can i just can i get uh, yeah. can i get 30 seconds of yes, just yes, another thought oh i mean this is a trigger stock that that uh she just thought that triggered this uh, in my head and something ravi kumar also mentioned in the past because in the bbg is different it's it's when i'm part of many professional forums um bbg is different right here we not only talk about the the professional staff and the sort of the industry between countries but we also connect with each other as human beings and i think that's a great differentiator compared to any other forum that that we go to and and that's why whenever there is a call from bbg it's always a pleasure to come and connect so i thought i just share my emotions with you thank you thank you christy on the lighter side yes. i think as as a quid pro quo for you introducing me i think i introduced balaji to bbg so <laughs> oh, well, well done well done well done well done no no he's been a great balaji has been a great addition to us and has served the committee extremely well Thank you, Balaji. Thank you. Thank you, Shridhar. Thank you, Shridhar. Right, uh, Vijay. If there's right. no I more things, I think we can we can we can wind the, it down. Yeah, meeting and uh, thank you all for contributing. If anybody wants to add on to this, you can always send the uh, Christy a uh, mail. You know. Yeah, Vijay, Vijay, Vijay. Just a quick uh, thing. Uh, we because there's nobody doing the notices i just mentioned this uh the next meeting in august yeah, we plan for the next meeting we were planning on august yeah. the 19th of august uh and we were planning it as a zoom meeting but uh, i will uh, thanks to the offer from paul if if all things work out we can have one on the lawn which would be much more interesting and i'm i'm quite happy paul to sponsor the meeting i mean whatever we have is uh, drinks and some uh, sort of short eats and all that i I'm, i'm quite happy to sponsor it myself and uh, if we can have the event there in some way that's possible and you can allow us to do it uh, maybe not more than you know an hour and a half to us we'll have a formal bit of the meeting where we'll stand there and we'll do it in that we would we'll talk about it uh, Paul, yeah, Paul, Paul uh, has left the meeting anyway so okay. yeah, i think we sure sure okay that's it that's that's it for me okay right on